Hey, welcome to Robinson Foundry. In today's video, I'll be making a set of solid copper trivets. These are the trivets we currently use. They work pretty well, but I thought it would be fun to design some myself. So after some CAD modeling in Fusion 360, this is what I came up with. Once my pattern was done, it was time to make a sand mold. I designed this pattern with 10 degrees of draft. Pattern draft is the amount of taper or slope added to the vertical surfaces of a casting pattern to make it easier to remove from the mold without causing damage. And a little baby powder helps to keep the pattern from sticking inside the mold. The sand I used is called Petrobond. It's an oil bonded sand that's capable of capturing incredibly fine detail in a pattern. By the way, if you're interested in any of the items I've used in this video, I'll include affiliate links in the description. There's something really satisfying about seeing the almost perfect impressions left in the sand. The final step in making this mold was to drill a hole to pour the metal into called a sprue and some smaller holes to vent smoke and hot gases through. And of course I didn't just make one mold, I made two. Next, it was time to get some copper melted. Fusion 360 will provide the mass of an object based on the material you selected, so that's how I figured out how much metal I needed for these molds. In this case, I needed about two pounds for each trivet. Of course, I also had to fill in the sprue, so I added in another pound each, giving me a total of six pounds. I usually err on the side of caution, and it's always better to have more than you need. I let the copper heat up to a couple hundred degrees past the melting point to make sure it was hot enough to flow into the molds. I also added in a tiny amount of this phosphor copper to the liquid metal right before the pour. It makes the metal less viscous and helps to remove some of the gas that's absorbed into the metal as it's melting. Once it was at the right temperature, I poured it into the molds as quickly and carefully as possible. Petrobond smokes like crazy, so I try to wait as long as possible before opening the mold so I can allow the castings to cool. And let me tell you, waiting for molten copper to cool down is about as exciting as watching paint dry. So to stay entertained, I like to play a little game I call, what can I incinerate in the still red hot crucible? Thank you. 
it's always really nice to open up a mold and see that the casting came out all right. Well that was the hard part. Next, I just had to clean them up and make them look presentable. The center sprues were a bit tricky to get to, so I carefully cut them off with a hacksaw, and then I just milled the rest off in my milling machine. There really wasn't a whole lot to finish on these, as I really wanted to keep the cool 3D printed look intact. So I used a hand file to remove any flaws, and then I just used a wire brush to gently clean them up. As a finishing touch, I stamped them with my channel initials and the year. I decided that I really didn't want these to naturally patina, so I coated them with this really durable clear coat called Protect-A-Clear. Remember how I said Petrobond is capable of capturing incredibly fine detail in a pattern? Well just take a look at all of these layer lines. This really amazes me. It's almost like these things were printed in copper. I really enjoy making things that I can actually use, and I'm looking forward to using these for years to come. I have a few videos about making copper castings, so if you liked this one, maybe you'll like some of my others. As always, please let me know what you think in the comments, give the video a thumbs up, and subscribe for future projects. Well, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.